Yeah. <laughs> I do. Okay. I do. But um, that, that, Kernan, you ready? I'm always You're ready. Really close. Come on forward, for Kernan. Come forward now. He, anyhow, before it rains, um, on behalf of my brother Kernan and my sisters Alexis, Karen, and Lori, I want to thank you and welcome you in joining in the celebration of the life of our mom, Joanne McCluster. Uh, clearly, I mean, you all knew her and you knew how blessed we were to have such a wonderful, wonderful influence in our lives. And I think your presence here only reaffirms what we've all known for so long. And that is that um, Joanne was just a wonderful, wonderful individual. You're here. Who lived a wonderful, fulfilling life. I have a personal um, allegiance. Uh, my name is Dennis Tex Richardson, a dear friend of the McClusters that I met. Uh, I think it was their very first trip here uh, in St. Thomas 36 years ago. And please, yeah. Kernan, Rory, and Karen, I think they were, they were all here at that time. And I had a distinct uh, pleasure of uh, serving them as I was a waiter at the Caribbean Hotel. And immediately after, I had a chance to meet the family. Immediately after. It was very charming and calming to see a family that was so connected, so full of laughter. I mean, everything was fun. They were, they were a family of fun. Uh, Frank and Joanne, Frank, you know, if you know Frank, you know the laugh that he had. A very catching, deep, <laughs> gets to you and makes you laugh. And we share many moments. I haven't had a chance to see these individuals until now, since then. So it's heartwarming. And I got a card for you all, for everybody, but I'd like to give it to Roe if I may. Great. Since I've been fond of her. <laughs> you guys have been wonderful. Thank you. That, that, the dad lived. You see that greenhouse over there? Yeah. Two houses down on the left? That's where the dad lived. <laughs> I would go and hang with dad and mom, had stuff to drink, and she'd make a beautiful salad. I mean, we just shoot all times. They were very, very, very distinct people. I wasn't here when uh, Frank Parker was away. I just happened to see this, and I just want you to know I, I'm here with you with a heavy heart. You guys are as beautiful as the dad and your mom were, and I love you both. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. It was very beautiful. Maybe one more person. I would love to. I'm a neighbor. Very close to neighbor. Yeah. <laughs> and I knew them from since I was young, uh, very young. Um, me and Jonesy used to cut trees so they wouldn't fall in the house. Uh -huh. You know? But the memory I want to. We need your bag. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But the memory I want to. The memory is the last memory when he was taking her to the doctor. And he asked me for help and to get her up the stairs. And that was that burning my consciousness because. Um, she was so proud, she would not allow you to pick her. It took us the longest time. <laughs> I mean, it took us the longest time. It did, it did. But she yeah, made sure did. she made every one of the steps by herself. It was so but we easy. had her back. I mean, we had her I mean, we had her. So that we would never forget yes. that death has been swallowed up in the victory of our Lord Jesus. So that we can live in confidence and with great hope until by your call we are gathered to our heavenly home in the company of all your saints. And this prayer we offer in your holy name. Amen. Amen. Now, there's a beautiful story in the book of Acts, and uh, it's about a woman named Tabitha, who is sometimes called Dorcas. And uh, she was very well loved, and she became suddenly ill and died. And uh, everyone was very sad. And the Bible story says that the Apostle Peter happened to be in that city. And so they sent word to Peter, will you please come and be with us because our hearts are heavy and we'd like for you to pray for us. So Peter came to where they were gathered. But before he could say a word, the people started bringing to him 
uh, things that she had made and telling stories about her life. And the stories and the tears and the things that she had made were just mixed together and they kept coming and they kept coming. And Peter was moved by everything that he saw and everything that he heard. Now this story becomes one of the first resurrection stories in the New Testament. It's in the book of Acts and Peter prays and Tabitha is given back her life. She stands up and he offers her her hand and it says Tabitha rose up. And that story is told throughout the region and many people become believers in the Lord Jesus. Now I believe in the resurrection. Yes. And I believe that when my time comes at the end of my life that I'm going to see what that's all about. I'm sure that it will exceed all of our imagining about what it's going to be because it's about something that God will reveal and it will be wonderful. And it will cause us to know that our faith has been worth it all this time. One of the most beautiful things I've heard in a long time was something that Kernan said to me a few days ago. He said to me, I'm sure that daddy's already up there holding the door open for mom to come in and find her place in heaven. And when you said that, you'll never know the kind of smile that came inside because you were smiling. And it was as if you were speaking on behalf of your sisters and on behalf of all of us here with that kind of love overflowing. That's what faith is and that's what hope is. And it is the evidence of the power of love. I believe in the power of the resurrection. I believe in the power of love. But I also believe in the power of our legacy. This life is meant to leave something behind. It is meant for us to encounter those things that are meant to last beyond our days. The story of Tabitha is people bringing to the apostle, to the apostle things that, that Tabitha had done, and stories about how she had lived and things that she had created. And those are very symbolic of what it means for us to be in this circle and to remember that there are legacies that we have from her that are meant to be passed on, not to be hidden, but to be spoken of, but to be demonstrated in the qualities that mark the lives that we live. Your mother had strong values. They're meant for you to pass them on. So many of you speak about the friendship that you knew with her. You're meant to be a better friend now to others be in honor of your friendship with her. She was not afraid to accept change. I love the story you talk about. 25th wedding anniversary, coming to St. Thomas, two years later, moving to St. Thomas. I think that that's a story about a couple that was confident in who they are and were willing to embrace a change in their life because they knew that they could make it work. And above all else, I want you to stay open to that spirit of adventure and to keep the passion that you, that your parents live with, alive in your own hearts. I want you to keep running those marathons. <laughs> and uh, I'm looking to the marathon runner over here because uh, uh, there's more than one. Okay, represent. Keep running those marathons.